What's going on guys? So this is a Verka ball, this is a tennis ball, and this is Master Grade Monday. Let's get to it. Alright guys, on this Master Grade Monday, we're going to take a look at the Master Grade Verka Mobile Pod Ball. Verka. <laughs> and it is the RB79 Middle Range Support Type Mobile Pod Ball Assignment Earth Federation Space Force. It's got all the specs and all the things right there. you got a great image of the ball right there. And you have a stripped down naked ball right there, which actually I think is a pretty cool deal. And you've got EFSF, Mass Production Support Mobile Pod, though you can't really read that. And UCO79 through UCO80, so that's the only time you made it. you got Bandai 2004, made in Japan, right there. And of course, Bandai logo, right there. Turn over here and you get all the nice little details. Specification, model number, 12.8 uh, meters high, 17.2 ton, generator output 400 kilowatts. I like when they measure things in kilowatts. You got the big old cannon right there and the EFSF assignment. And you got obligatory front and rear shot. Very good looking mobile weapon there. And the box got crunched a little bit. It is what it is. And come over here. You got all the middle range support type. Ball. All the balls. Bandai. Master grade. Nice image. And you've got a bunch of read-up that I can't read because it's in Japanese and I'm not. you got CG Works Art by Katoki Hajime, of course, because it says Verka. And you've got all the things right there, and I saw images all over that. But the cool thing is, they actually weathered it just a little bit, used some kind of grungy things, and also gave it a much lighter base coat. And you got some little figures right there. And you've got what I assume means age is 15 plus. Hey, I'm right in the middle of that. you got the little guy with the toilet. you got 2,000 yen. I paid 25 bucks for it, so... Round about that looks pretty good. Also, that's a pretty cool looking inner frame. So, even though it's a ball, it can be upside down. <laughs> now, guys, there won't be a uh, there won't be a build montage for this one. I decided to skip it this week. So let's just go ahead and get right to it. Right, guys, so here we have the ball all nice and done. Looking pretty cool. I gotta drop the light down just a little bit, I think. And um, unlike other reviews, there's not gonna be a whole lot here to look at because I mean, it's it's a ball. <laughs> I mean, weapons are limited, articulation is limited, but the details are it's chock full of details for sure. But just real quick, let's do a quick comparison because I didn't realize how big. A ball was until I built this thing. So you put it next to a regular MG. So these are in the same scale. I didn't realize that they were this big, to be totally honest. I thought they were tiny. But I guess it makes sense. You want a mobile pod to be fairly hefty when it comes to defending you and keeping you alive in space. So, I mean, compared to one of the last MGs we looked at, you know, that's, that's pretty sizable. And because it does come with a pilot, you know, you, you can totally see that size-wise. Now we can put him next to Wally, because Wally is kind of like a ball, but he's more of a cube. So if he was technically designated a, a cube from the EFSF, that would totally work. Just put some tracks on a ball and make it more square. That would totally be Wally. No big deal. And I would compare it to my HG balls, but those aren't here. <laughs> those are down at Hobby Town. So pretty much what you get is you got a ball, it's got arms, it has a stand, no big deal. Just real quick, since you normally look at accessories and stuff, the main accessory is the stand, so take a very nice look at it. It's done in a weird kind of navy-ish green color. Pretty cool, just five pieces, base, and all the uprights. And it could probably do with a little bit of dry brushing or something like that, but honestly, not that worried about it. It just looks good. Now you do get two other standing like workers. They're not pilots, I don't believe. It could one could be a pilot, the other one could be a worker. Um, I didn't bother with those yet. I'm going to save them. Leave them on the side for another project or something. Set the stand aside. And look at the ball itself. It's all molded in this off, not, not white, not gray, not green-ish color. 
And this thing comes with a buttload of stickers, guys. And I'll tell you right now, I hate them. I hate them all. Dry transfers? Not that bad. The stickers are horrendous. They're as bad as any from Gundam Wing or any Verka of this generation because you have to cut them to fit. They're all cut in a square and you just got to do whatever it is you can to put them in position and cut off any excess and they were a nightmare. I spent easily as long putting on stickers on this thing as building it and that includes all the paintwork. Like the, the little bit of paintwork I did do on this thing, it all of it took less time than just putting all the stickers and dry transfers on. And just a little bit of that glimpse of that paintwork can be hard to see, but just inside those little thrusters there. Of course, the obligatory good gold. I should have put some in here, but I didn't know what I was working with and the way this thing layers. You know, it is what it is. All the thrusters got a little bit of gold underneath, like so. And these are ball joint mounted, so you can position them a little bit. This one will wiggle a little and you got the rubber hose we'll take a look at everything a little bit more closer on the inside when we pull off some of the armor and stuff because you can totally strip this thing down and you actually get these metal pipes right there for the hydraulics i really do dig that uh totally unnecessary because i mean in reality if it was just a pipe a normal piece of plastic i would have just hit it with some chrome marker but i love the fact that they gave us that you do get these little I think technically they are a wire they're just very very small could just be a plastic piece but that is a very interesting thing in that you have to tie a knot in it run it up through it and basically do it like a button and that's how you get that effect also got a tiny bit of chrome there just to make that stand out um, I will mention this do not panel line any of this stuff if you get it nothing in this claw panel line it you have to be very careful because as you can see all the cracking on this one and in fact, this side is the worst one for coming apart. This whole thing shattered on me just because I panel lined it. So the actual makeup of the panel line marker ate away at the plastic, weakened it, and it completely came apart. So none of these claws on either side is going to articulate properly now. And that's just the thing I've got to live with. So it's kind of like what happened with the wing Gundam uh, elbows that broke on me after painting them. So that is what that is. Of course, other than that, you do have the really big cannon up on top. I really do dig that. Now, the stickers here don't look too bad. Of course, I had to trim all that excess. And, of course, it's going to stand out that they're there. I think if you clear coat it first and then put things on, it will definitely show off. And for the first time ever, I actually washed the runners before I did it. Though some of them felt like they were even slicker after being washed. So I don't know. You also get these cool, posable little mini thrusters all right through here i really dig that you got dry transfers all over the surface also got some really bad stickers this is one of the worst ones uh because i had I applied it and removed it several times so it lost some of its elasticity the dry transfers are all nice for the most part but you can see some of them are not easy to put on like trying to put on a tiny little thing like this on a curved surface is really not easy and so it kind of, that's why these are all kind of crooked. These are all okay. And misreading the directions, or at least misreading the part that was in my hand, should be a big red uh, marking across there. But instead, <coughs> it's across the front. Also, this bar, that was an interesting one. <laughs> Trying to get a dry transfer on that. Uh, I wish that these right here, the on the front, were all dry transfers, but they were not. This inner ring was a very interesting bit of stickering, like so. So, some of it is not bad. The rest of it is. I will say that. Now, just real quick, go over articulation, because it has a little bit. Of course, the gun does point up and down, does rotate. I believe there is a polycap there. Now, I like the fact that this is built like a real, like, CV thing. So, you actually have a rubber boot and a big old ball joint going into there, into another socket like that because obviously it just popped out on me but you can totally articulate it and it feels like a robotic arm i don't know how to explain it it feels like a cool robotic arm you got a little bit of that rubber resistance it's awesome now we do get these little other sub arms i don't know what these flippers technically are for maybe they just pick stuff up like a forklift or for getting a really good grip on something you also get a wrist quote unquote right here 
It's gonna not, you know, also, oh, I forgot, yeah, they totally spin, they rotate. Everything kind of rotates here. Each little individual elbow here does move. I'm just being careful because I don't know what may or may not be weakened. I'm not seeing any cracking. I purposely skipped out on some of the panel liner to make sure it didn't crack on me. Down here, it does rotate at the actual flipper. This one will move because I didn't have to glue it in place to fix it. I'm just being very ginger with it. These do rotate up here, but it's not going to rotate, so I'm going to just let it be. And you do get actual pivot up here, the quote-unquote wrist. So, I mean, realistically, these, these arms are very well very well articulated for what they are. They're meant for grabbing, pushing, pinching, whatever, like crabby, crabby. Wow. I don't, I don't know what that sound was. And really, the only other thing that does move is the canopy. And this thing is very difficult for me to open because, well, for one, the arms are kind of in the way. But you've got this little lip right there. And if you can get a fingernail under it, I just knocked over to Jim. Or if you can get a knife to it, it makes it real easy, if try, but it's harder to get a fingernail, trust me. So you can slide that out, and then it hinges up, and there you've got the cockpit. We'll take a closer look at that with the armor and everything off, which I'll go ahead and do. How about now? Okay, so you want to go ahead and strip it down so you can see the inside. Go ahead and just yoink the gun off. No big problem there. And pull this little bull bar out here. Go ahead and grab this tow bar here. I really like this. It's even got the little tow, tow hooks on there. Not to mention that it's actually three separate pieces that goes together. You can pull the arms themselves off, but there's almost no need. You can just grab the entire bottom section just wiggle it loose it comes out just like that no fuss no muss and now it's like an escape ball <laughs> it's really what it looks like to me okay where are we gonna go now let's let's pull the backpack off okay so the backpack shell totally comes off from here you can grab the top of the unit here I might be doing this all in the wrong order. I'm not entirely certain. It does just kind of layer. So crack the egg like so. I'll just set all the armor off to the back here. And grab this part and just pop it off like so. Just work our way down. I don't know if this needs to come off. The only part that doesn't really come off is this part. So that's okay. Just need to get a thumb up under here. Oops. That wasn't supposed to come off, but it did. I'll show that off in a minute. So you got the bottom chunk. Come on right here. The whole side panel comes right off. Same thing with this side panel. This is attached fairly well. It actually tabs into the inner frame. Like so. You can pull off these little panels. And you're thinking, why are you bothering taking all the armor off? Because it is meant to be displayed like this. That's why, Jimmy. Come on. Why you always got to have questions like that, Jimmy? Now, I normally don't take that off, but it's actually not hard, so may as well. And you can totally just pull off the canopy part. Just got to slide it right out. No biggie. And there we've got a stripped-down ball. And this is where you can really see the beauty of it. So you can see all of the underlying hoses and everything that I've spent time detailing. We've got some gold, we've got gunmetal, little red dots here and there, some chrome. See all of the stickers that are put on the inside. And yeah, those are all the stickers. You have to actually trim every single one of those. You actually get to see the little green porthole parts there. Got some nice yellow, gold, chrome, and red wiring and pipes going on right through there. Come around here, you can see some gunmetal and some chrome along here. Got all this nice gold panel back here. It looks like a heat panel to me, so I painted it gold because I figured that's what it should be. I hated these stickers right here. Those are absolutely terrible, and you can see them really, really badly. Now, the only thing I didn't do was these parts right here. I could probably use a little bit of gold, a little bit of chrome right through there. 
but the thrusters you can see the hinge right here plus the ball joint as well so fairly well maneuverable but I really do dig this and I painted this whole part this little outer frame is done in gunship gray to separate it and I think it just looks absolutely beautiful and yeah there's no reason to pull these guys out for armor purposes now I'll go ahead and yank the little main thruster out of the bottom here so you can take a look at that just got some gold some chrome some red and some white right through there I think the white really made it pop some nice white pipes so to speak I wanted to do this part in some gold or some copper and I just left it to be totally honest I just wasn't worth it in my opinion. Let me lower the light down so we can try to see inside a cockpit. Which I can see, but you guys are going to have a hard time. So you can see the pilot is painted. I got about as close as I could on the uniform color. I did a yellow and then cover, covered it up with some gray so you can get a little bit of the yellow and the gray coming through. And then got a custom mixed orange for the details and a little bit of visor green for the eyes. And that's really strange. I'm still seeing some gold come through from that red marker that I used. Especially back in there. And the one thing you can't see is I actually painted the seat with a nice little uh, char red. And you can see some red on the side here. Some details. And actually the back side of his console right here. His little control console. The actual screen I painted with visor green. Or eye green I should say. I can get that out but I might not be able to. If I get it out I might not be able to get it back in. So I'm not, not too concerned with but yeah that's pretty much it i mean this thing really wasn't super difficult if you aren't going to paint any details you could probably throw this thing together in maybe 30 minutes if that i mean it's it's not complicated it's several big chunks and then layering stuff on top of that so i mean you've got your maneuvering thrusters all stripped down here no biggie i will give a word of warning these things right here if you kind of mess them up just a little bit will not stay i think the only reason why uh i believe actually it was this one it would fall out if i didn't have the main armor on um i think because i put a little bit of chrome paint in there to make it pop a little bit more is the only reason it wants to stay in there so but that's going to be it for the Master Grade Ball Review. Guys, I told you it wasn't going to take a very long one here. I really, really do uh, recommend this kit. So, I mean, this is the Verka version, so it's about $25. For the most part, I think all of them are in the $20 to $30 range, depending on which one you're getting. If you get the Igloo version, you get, like, the Shark Face version, which might be the same version. I don't know. I kind of want that one. I like the different weapons. I like the different claws, and not to mention the aesthetics. And there is something I did not do. There is supposed to be a rather large EFSF logo right there. But trying to put a dry transfer that's about that big on a spherical surface, I wasn't about to try to do, to be totally honest. And of course, guys, I would like to thank my patrons as always. John, Andy, Steve, and Colby. You guys are great. If you guys want to become a patroneer, go ahead and check out the link right there and see how you can help donate to the channel. If you guys are interested in any Shoki merch, I'm selling t-shirts, of course. So just have a bunch of them right here on the, on the screen. Just boom. And, you know, go over, to, go over to the Teespring link and go see if you want to get any of those shirts. I know that Lee Gallup got his. Mine should be here very, very soon. Uh, possibly tomorrow. So, or I guess today. That would be today now. <laughs> it is Monday. So, and if you guys need to check out anything for the Lupus for Lupus contest, it'll be in the card up here and, of course, in the end screen. So, if you want to go over there, help either donate buy some merch, or join in on the contest, guys. It will be awesome. We've already got some entries, and I'm very much looking forward to the box from Gundam Planet getting here. So I got a loose hunk of sticker. So when the box gets here, I know exactly what is in the contest for prizes. So yay for that. And I'll catch you guys on the next review. And remember, as always, keep on balling. There, I said it. Are you happy? <laughs> oh, bye, guys.